Kelly, I had to put this one on here. I, I had to. We, we have a week jam-packed with six ranked matchups, and gosh darn it, I am going to put a MAC game in here. We have the Ohio Bobcats, your Ohio Bobcats, a 13-point favorite on the road at my Bowling Green State University Falcons. This game carries a lofty over-under of just 44.5 points, and it kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. The under took a lot of money. Uh, it opened up at around 46. Again, now down to 45, 44 and a half. So people are betting the under there. Ohio is without their backup, CJ Harris. He's done for the season. That's a big deal because Rourke has been struggling with injuries. And if he can't go at any point this year, there was a pretty high safety net. CJ Harris was a pretty decent backup. Now we're talking about dipping into the third stringer territory. On the Bowling Green side, they have their own quarterback issues. Connor Basilak missed the Michigan game with an injury. It's a maybe he could come back uh, this week. Camden Orth, the backup, he left with an injury in the second quarter against the Wolverines. And we've got Hayden Timoshak. He came in to play quarterback, the third stringer. Kelly, he's six foot seven. You're not going to miss him on the football field if he's out there. However, both Basilak and Orth are listed on the depth chart for this coming week. Uh, but Scott Leffler said he doesn't really know who's going to get the start, maybe healthy or not. I'm not a huge Connor Basilek guy, uh, so honestly, I'm not sure my handicap changes about all that much, regardless of who plays. Basilek will throw for more yards. Maybe he'll be more accurate, more completions, but he's going to throw more interceptions. We've already seen that, that he is not ideal. Uh, but here's where here's where I'm going to get off the road a little bit. I'm not going to be talking numbers. I'm not talking player personnel. We're talking spots here. Ohio's coming off a big-time home win against Iowa State. They won it 10-7. to 7. It was kind of gross, but hey, you're beating a Power 5 at home in the MAC. Last year, Marshall came into Bowling Green fresh off their upset of Notre Dame. Bowling Green won that game. It was their homecoming. I was there. This year, Ohio comes into Bowling Green fresh off their Iowa State upset, and it's Bowling Green's homecoming again. This is really the only time of year in which you get a packed Doit Perry Stadium. Most of the year, 125 other schools trounce Bowling Green's game day. There's 8,000 people in the stands. It might be Tuesday night. There's like no tailgating to speak of. Most students watch these games from the bars. Personally speaking, I worked a lot of these games. But we're talking about the one time a year where there's going to be a full house at Toy Perry Stadium, especially for Ohio. That's kind of this regional Mac East rivalry that Bowling Green really sees. I highlighted in my upset alerts piece. An upset alerts piece that has 8-2 and two record against the spread with the underdogs. I highlighted four of them this, this week that have to do with scheduling uh, spots and, and weird things like that because it does affect the college game disproportionately. My numbers aren't going to back it up. I want to talk about your numbers because I think this is interesting. But because my numbers won't back it up, that's why it's kind of an upset pick. What do you think about your Ohio Bobcats and my Bowling Green Falcons? Yeah, Brent, we had to talk about this one. You're absolutely right. In a slate that's jam-packed, we got to get into where we went, uh, got some degrees from here. Uh, I kind I like the pick, I'll be honest, because while the spread's 13, I have Ohio minus three and a half only. Wow. It's a, it's a 60% Jeez. win expectancy for the Bobcats. Yeah, this is this is one of those games where I actually had asked you offline. I was like, hey, am I missing something? What's going on? Why do I have such a big discrepancy here? And as we talk through it, I felt more and more confident in, yeah, I think, Brett, you're really onto something with this upset pick. And some of these things that are off the field, some of the intangible, some of the storylines, I know that doesn't play into the game necessarily, but it becomes a theme. It really does. Um, and I, I could see that being the case this year. Overall, Ohio is a team that's almost exactly as I expected. They've risen 0.1 points in the ratings and two spots in the corresponding rankings. Had a very good read on this team, at least at this point, coming into the year. But I whiffed on both of the units by almost equal amounts. Uh, it's the offense that's fallen from number 71 to number 100. It's a defense that's improved from number 117 to number 60. So Ohio's been my favorite in the East each week, and they still are. Uh, there isn't a single game remaining in the regular season in which I make the Bobcats a projected underdog. Battle of the Bricks against Miami, Ohio is in Athens this year. That's at Ohio University. Uh, I think that's huge because I do think those are the two, quote, best teams in the East by my numbers. But first things first, before Ohio gets to that one, they got to take care of Bowling Green. And I do think they pose a serious threat, as we talked about. Despite the one and two start, the offense and defense are both better than I projected for Bowling Green. The Falcons have improved from number 121 overall. They're now up to number 107. So still not great. 
But when you're in the MAC and you're fighting for a division title, number 107 is you, you can work with that. Uh, and if they continue to get better, it, it'll get better. That's third best in the division for now. They are behind the Bobcats and the Red Hawks, as I said. Bowling Green's regular season win total projection has improved from 4.4 to 5.2. And the Falcons now have a 40% chance to go bowling by my numbers. That's up from a 21% chance in the preseason. So it's nearly doubled uh, in that time. My numbers give the Bobcats the edge on both sides of the ball. But the fact that it's in Bowling Green, the fact that it's homecoming, the fact that they're going to have a stadium full of people this weekend, it does make it interesting. I have Ohio minus three and a half, 40% chance Bowling Green pulls off the upset win at home on homecoming weekend. Ohio, I mentioned they currently have a 50% chance to make the MAC championship game up in Detroit with a win that jumps to 59%. With a loss, it's down to 35%. Bowling Green, of course, power rated lower, uh, 9% chance to make it currently. A win will more than double that, up to 20%. A loss drops it all the way down to 3% because now you're a game back and you've lost the tiebreaker to a team that I'm projecting to be better. So it makes sense that the numbers are going to say you're just about out of it with a loss, even though in reality, they're not. We know how crazy Maction can get, but that's what the numbers are saying right now. I'm not an aggressive better. Uh, people that have followed me for the past couple of years know that I'm a very conservative better. I like betting sides. I like betting totals. I, I love me a good minus 110. I do not chase plus signs. But I'm sprinkling a little bit on the money line for Bowling Green on this one. I, I really am. Uh, not a lot. I'm, I'm not putting a full unit down on that. Good God, no. Um, but I'm at least taking the points and putting a, a small position on their money line as well. This is a very typical Bowling Green thing to do. I've seen it for years. They'll win this game. And then they'll go lose to Akron or get their doors blown off by Buffalo. That's just what Bowling Green does. But yeah, hey, if you're, if you're looking for an exciting upset pick to cheer on this week, uh, Bowling Green, outright, 